Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and I'm here to tell you about beginner tank gear for the Elder Scrolls Online. This video is going to give you a step-by-step -step progression on how you should gear your tank for PvE, beginner, intermediate, advanced, for well-rounded builds and all classes. Moreover, I'm going to tell you what gear sets you should focus on as a tank and why and how to progress swapping things in and out. Stay tuned because tanking is one of the most difficult roles in Elder Scrolls Online PvE and there are a ton of great options to select so it's hard to know where to start. Also, if you ever want to see me tank live, come visit me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gaming. Let's get started. Almost every other MMO, tanking comes down to stacking as much health and as much mitigation as possible, but not ESO. So I want to talk about gear priorities as a tank, and let me clear some things up. ESO tanking is not just solely about holding block and surviving and taunting. ESO tanking is about three things. Survival first, obviously, and taunting. Number two is damage added buffs and sets. And number three is resource sustain. You must survive as a tank first, and frankly, this is very easy in 99% of the content. No, I'm not talking about Dread Cellar hard mode or some of the very difficult trials, but generally stacking some HP and using the skills can provide great survivability. The other two, resource sustain and specifically buffs that add DPS are the most important. It's much more important than trying to squeeze out an ounce of DPS as a tank. Let's do some math here to demonstrate. Let's say you want to do a DPS tank hybrid build. Okay, so you put some damage gear sets on and you put some damage skills on and you do 10,000 DPS, great. Now let's take that same tank and same team, stack damage added sets, resource sustain, and your overall team DPS is increased by 20,000. Who's the better tank? Both survive, one doubles the team's DPS, one doesn't. And this is the path of progression we are going to focus on as a tank, adding value sets along with survivability sets for those 1%er dungeons and trials. So that sounds good. Let's start with the beginner basic. Great. I want to tank. How do I start? Where do I go? The easiest sets to collect straight out the gate is Overland because you can obtain them at level 3 or champion point 2000 and you can buy them off the traders and most of them are very cheap. The number one set I'd go for straight out the gate is Grace of Gloom. It comes from Overland set, Summer set, and you can buy it off the trader. When you're doing Overland, basically you do the typical things. Delves, world bosses, public dungeons, and dolmens. Each of them have a chance to drop specific items. This is going to help you with survivability and especially knife self heals if you struggle with learning how to tank. The next set I'd work towards collecting is Ebon Armony from Crypt of Hearts 1 or 2. And you don't even need to complete the veteran version to get a full 5 piece. And you can be very good to start or at endgame as it provides health to you and your party up to 12 people. So you can get this set early, you can collect it, and if you have nothing else to provide in a trial, you could always throw this on as a starter piece. These two sets in combination will give you a lot of health points and healing, thus helping you with survivability starting out. Speaking of max health, that leaves the weapons. Let's go the Endurance 2-piece from Imperial City, Dungeon Finder Rewards of the Wordy Their Traders. It's extremely easy to get a hold of and absolutely dirt cheap on the traders, and it's going to give you more max health with the 2-piece being added by both of the weapons. That will give you two 5-pieces and a weapon, and it's a good beginner loadout. For the traits, I'd use Reinforce on the chest as it gives you the most benefit, Sturdy to reduce block cost, making it easier to hold block and survive. A lot of beginner tanks will run out of stamina because either they hold block too much, don't hold it enough and get uppercutted and deleted, or they don't understand that after a boss or mob does their fully charge heavy attack, that gives you about a 5 second window to do a couple of fully charge heavy attacks of your own and get back stamina. You're going to go with Sword and Shield on the front along with the Ice Staff on the back as it's meta right now. Reason being is both weapons can be used to mitigate damage while holding block and both have fantastic buffs and debuffs to provide your group. You might as well use these two weapon skill lines, level them up, morph the skills and get used to it. For the weapon traits, the most important is Infuse Crusher Enchant on the back because it will add a lot of damage to your group and is useful at the start of the game or an end game. 
But if you can't get mid-max traits, don't worry about. Throw some training, divines, invigorating, it doesn't matter. Collecting the five pieces is the most important to start. And I'd go with all heavy to start based on the gear armor choices we've made, but later on, you're gonna move towards a 5-1-1 setup. Five heavy, one light, one medium for more max stats. And if you don't like this setup or you don't have it, some quick alternatives is the Plague Doctor for massive HP boost, though it doesn't provide any group utility. Battalion's Defender from PvP, an incredible survivability set, and one that I use actually complete Dread Cellar hard mode. Hide of the Werewolf is also another Overland set and is great for high ultimate generation. And there's a couple of craftable sets like Fortified Brass for higher mitigation, meaning you take less damage, and Torx Pack to get more benefit out of your Crusher enchant. Now that you have these sets ready to go, you're ready to step into Veteran Dungeon, so let's move on to Intermediate. For the Intermediate loadout, your first priority is to replace your weapons with a Monster Helm and run two five pieces in a Monster Helm. By far the easiest and most beneficial for you to get straight out the gate is Sentinel from Dark Shade 1. This will give you resource sustain for you and your group, and it's useful because you're gonna get stamina back when blocking in dungeons is gonna suck up your stamina. Plus, this is good for trials and or dungeons because it provides group sustain, not just selfish, not just you. Consider this a basic set, a basic monster helm. So you're gonna to need to add to your monster collection for situational uses. I use selfish resource sustain sets like Engine Guardian when the entire PvE encounter predicates on me surviving. I'm looking at you, hard mode dungeons. Earth Gore is really useful if your party needs a burst heal and you're not able to provide it. And the absolute god tier monster helm, Magma Incarnate from Dread Cellar, adding two super important buffs to four players if they are in range. There are many more, but these would be my number one priority straight out the gate as you get familiar with the veteran dungeons. Next, you'll work towards a five piece on the body that adds damage, increasing your overall team's DPS. One I'd suggest is Crimson Oath. This comes from Dungeon Dread Cellar and can be obtained via normal mode if you're not able to complete the veteran. It'll strip resistances, not just single target, but AOE. Combine this set with your infused crusher enchant, pierced armor skill from sword and shield, and your overall team DPS will skyrocket, as most mobs have around 18,000 resistances. You can get that number close to zero and with this loadout, and it makes a big difference. Another set I absolutely love is Drake's Rush from Black Drake Villa. When you bash an enemy, you and four players get a lot of ultimate regen. This isn't necessarily ideal for trials, but for sweaty dungeons and arena, especially on a Dragonite, this set is a go-to and a must-have to collect. If you're looking for another top-notch survivability set with a little bit of damage, check out Leeching Plate from Imperial City Prison. Now you have some good monster helms, you got a good five piece, and you'll need to replace your other five piece, and one is an absolute monster, powerful assault from Imperial City, and you can buy it on the traders. This will add a lot of weapon and spell damage to your party when you cast Echoing Vigor on your back bar, but you'll also notice this damage added is not a major or minor buff. Why that's relevant is you can stack Powerful Assault on top of Minor and Major Courage, reaching almost 1,000 spell and weapon damage added in coordinated PvE groups. The downside is you'll need to be on your back bar and proc it via Echoing Vigor or whatever morph you have, so it does have a higher skill cap and you're gonna have to maintain this a lot of times, and it can be very expensive to get a hold of this gear set, but it's well worth it. If you're gonna invest in tanking, I'd highly recommend it. And if you don't want to fuss with it or don't have the gold, you can always do simple combinations like Ebon and Crimson until you get to this point. The major advantage is you can back bar this setup with Powerful Assault and use one skill, and that leaves your front bar to have a weapon choice. I like the Master's Weapons from Dragon Star Arena. This will give you a sane self-burst heal and resistances when you use Pierced Armor or your Taunt. With this loadout, my team can complete nearly every dungeon, even veteran hard modes, without a healer. Three DPS, one tank, because I'm so dang survivable, and I do actually provide a lot of off healing. Now you have a great intermediate setup. Let's move on to the advanced, and when you get to the advanced level, most likely you'll be doing trials with a raid lead that wants specific buffs and gear sets. Always listen to your raid leader and what they suggest, but here's a common loadout that will work for a lot of folks. The number one five piece is Claw of Yolocrins because it gives minor courage to your entire 12 player trial group. 
Typically, healers will run major courage sets and keep up 100% uptime on minor, making this your number one priority to replace. You'll want to keep this on the body at all times, so when you're taunting it, proccing and keeping that uptime as high as possible. You can obtain this set in Sunspire Trial on Normal or Veteran. You can also keep the same Master's Weapons in Powerful Assault, and you'll want to work on replacing your Monster Helm to Encractus Behemoth from Black Drake Villa. Why? Because the buff of increased flame damage will apply to your entire Trials team and is a staple in endgame rating. Not to mention most DPS at endgame high tier Trials are magic using Flame Staff, which will truly amp up your overall group DPS. There are many more awesome heavy armor trial sets and one I'd suggest collecting is Aegis of Gallowin, which empowers your team within 15 meters after successfully blocking. The sweatier PvE groups get, the more buffs and debuffs you'll want to coordinate with each other. The entire goal is to ramp up your overall team's DPS, resource sustain so the fights are done much faster, thus much easier. Keep in mind, every situation is different. So when we are learning to tank, I'd highly recommend specking into survivability and resource sustain first. What this allows you to do is learn the encounters and become more familiar with it. So I simplify my bar, I add a lot more healing, and I take the complex buffs and debuffs rotation off. I simply just hold block, taunt what I need to, and make sure I'm alive. Once I've learned the encounters, then I start stripping off those sets and I start stripping off those skills that made things easier for survival. I start working towards ramping up the damage for me and my team, making the fights and the encounters easier. But always start with the training rules when you're learning first, because let me tell you, everybody does. And now you understand this in the advanced setup, you're ready to take on the hardest challenges in ESO. These are generic templates and can be used on every class. However, listen to your raid leader if they want something specific. But trust me, these work and I play them on stream at twitch.tv slash Gaming. Also, please consider following me on Twitter at DeltiasGaming1 as it's very easy for me to interact with folks on social if you have questions. And also consider becoming a Patreon as it allows me to crank out more of these videos and grow my channel. And if we're doing massive plugs, you gotta like and hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching.